Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to talk about genetic polymorphism and viral load as determined for therapeutic response against COVID-19. In this presentation, I would like to concentrate on the following aspects in relation to COVID-19. Till the time of preparing this video, people do not believe in Corona as a virus as they believe in it as a conspiracy theory. This is of course for the large sector of people, not for the all. I think that the social media has participated in promoting this perception among people. I think that the period since the appearance of COVID-19 as a pandemic issue is still relatively short and many things are still remaining to be known in the future. However, thousands of articles have been published. I was looking for research articles investigating the aspects of both genetic polymorphism and viral load, but there is some sort of disturbance among researchers. I think that genetic polymorphism and viral load are crucial determinants for therapeutic responses against COVID-19. In-depth investigation of these two variables makes the core of developing therapeutic options. I have previous experience in hepatitis C virus. In hepatitis C virus, both viral load and genetic polymorphism are important features in treatment options. Viral load helps in identifying degree level of infectious potentiality for example, two phenomena can be explained. The first phenomenon is why COVID-19 has various degrees of infectious potential. As an illustrating example of the viral load is relatively low, then the infectious ability is limited. And if the viral load is high, then anyone exposed can be infected. The second phenomenon is when the best time to initiate treatment against COVID-19. If a treatment is initiated when viral load is limited, treatment is almost successful. Let us take the treatment by hydroxychloroquine as an example. It was promoted and adopted by scientific community. It is well known that the President of USA, Donald Trump, was interested and excited for the use of this treatment. I think that the president was not mistaken, but he was not a good reporter for scientific results. Regarding genetic polymorphism, initial information about COVID-19 was related to respiratory system, particularly the lungs. Polymorphisms in the gene ACE2 is thought to play a role and the infectious ability of COVID-19. The expression of ACE2 receptor was reported in various tissues, including liver and kidney. Accordingly, we can explain the impacts of COVID-19 on other systems. Finally, I have got the idea why diabetic patients and heart patients are more likely to have adverse effects by COVID-19. We think uh, this is due to synergistic effects of having other viruses such as human papilloma virus, HPV, and cytomegalovirus, CMV, in case of diabetes, as we found experimentally. What is more interesting for me is the potential of COVID-19 to transform type 2 diabetes into type 1 diabetes, and accordingly, it is possible to look for COVID-19 as an autoimmune disease which may require different therapeutic options. In heart cases, we also have previously found that chlamydia pneumonia to exist in about 50% of patients with heart disease. Synergism of the various pathogens in COVID-19 is worthy to be more investigated. The last point in this presentation is about immune system itself. Here I may ask a big question. Do immune cells learn or just memory cells in their best conditions? I have the tendency towards learning potential of immune cells. This may explain cross-reactivity with related antigens. 
as an example, a recent evidence implies that previous exposure to other viruses from coronaviruses may offer protection against COVID-19. Thank you very much.